Hello! This is one of a series of short videos produced by XB Power in response to questions received by our applications team around the world. We hope you find them useful. Well, I was just getting ready for a party and I find, found that the insulation is damaged on this string of LED lights. Should I worry about that? What will happen if somebody touches the bare wire? We've received several inquiries recently asking for verification that a certain PSU output qualifies as SELV, S-E-L-V. So I'm going to talk about how the classification of low voltage DC circuits has changed following the handover to the new safety standard, IEC 62368-1. Until recently, XP Power sold the majority of our products with approval to the standard 6950-1. This standard included categorization of the DC output as self, separated extra low voltage, where the circuit must be separated from hazardous voltages by an insulated barrier. It must be separated from the earth so that no current can flow through a person down to earth and it must not be able to produce a voltage greater than 60 volts or 42.4 volts peak. You can read more about that in section 2.2 of the standard. But the object of the self classification is that the circuit could be safely touched by an ordinary person, say through the broken insulation on a piece of wire. Remember that point though, safely touched by an ordinary person. However, 62368-1 has completely abandoned self. So here is how a low voltage circuit is classified within the new hazard-based safety standard. A low energy, sorry, a low voltage circuit or any circuit provides a source of energy. Electrical energy can be a hazard to a person due to current flowing through the body or by providing a source of ignition for a fire. In this standard, energy sources are placed into one of three categories and here are the limits for categories one and two. I presented just the values for DC circuits. Anything that does not fall into energy source one or two is therefore energy source or ES3. I'll use those abbreviations in the rest of the presentation. For ES1, notice that the DC voltage is the same as self at 60 volts DC. This was measured between the output terminals and from the terminals of the floating circuit to earth. The new method has the output circuit referenced to earth with the worst case voltage measurement taken from other terminals. Notice that a current measurement has been introduced where none existed before. To be clear though, this is not the current capability of the circuit, but the current that would flow through a person to, grow up to earth if they touched any one terminal. It is defined as the touch current. Another key point to note is that the limits apply independently, which is a little tricky to understand. For any voltage up to the voltage limit, there is no limit for the current. Likewise, for any current up to the current limit, there is no limit for the voltage. For more on the compatibility of self with ES1 circuits, and the safeguards that must protect users and service engineers, stay tuned for part two of this topic. Otherwise, I hope that you have found this video helpful.